looking at the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 45 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of 10 and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Speaker at Speaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you like to download the app, it is available on all Android and Apple devices. So go download it and check it out, guys. Great podcasting app. And after it is done, we recorded. If it's done recording, it's posted on YouTube, Spreaker, and now iTunes. We are back on iTunes, ladies and gentlemen. So go check us out where it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read on the podcast, tweet us at No Holds Bar WP and follow us on there as well. And subscribe to us on YouTube and drop a comment on the YouTube video below. I am your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I'm continuing to be joined by my co hosts, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Hello. He's here. I'm here. He's here. <laughs> um, I screwed up last week. I was listening to our podcast uh, from last week. And in the beginning, I didn't stop the music, the lowdown show <laughs> theme. So it was playing for about a minute after, like, as we're talking right now. And I'm like, what the hell, man? I think that's what oh, you're well. pointing at last week. Oh. You're like, what the hell is that? And I kept talking. going, oh, It's nothing, man. I got to stop. No, I had the theme song play. But I, I'm 100% certain right now I have it stopped. Like you guys are not listening to freaking D'Lo Brown's theme. You're listening to me talk. <laughs> it's, I mean, as great as a theme as it is. And our boy D'Lo Brown being the theme song for our podcast and, you know, the basis of the low down show. <laughs> um, it's a great song, but I'm sorry. I apologize last week for botching like Dana Botch. Sorry. We got a lot of we got a lot of songs and stuff yeah. on the soundboard here. So, yeah, um, I got something to rant about Uh-oh. on wrestling related. I'm, I'm bringing back the rant. If you guys remember my previous episodes last year, I had some, some subway rants and other rants. I got a rant here. So I'm a su- my, my new job, I'm a supervisor, okay, at a uh, retail slash pharmacy store, okay? Um, I noticed something lately that's actually been eating at me. For some reason, I don't know why I get pissed off at this, okay? It's just me. Um, so I'm sitting there, and I'm cashing this guy out yesterday, and... And you know, he's got a lot of stuff. He's not saying anything. I asked him, how are you? He just, you know, just shunned me. I'm like, okay, fine then. All I asked was how your day was. Um, putting his stuff in the bag and calculating the total up. And he doesn't even say a word after I tell him the total. He just grabs his card and just puts it on the machine. Doesn't tell me if it's credit or debit. He just puts it on the machine. Without me looking, I, I can't see it. It's turned the other way. How the fuck am I supposed to know what card you have there? And he he has it placed on the machine because we have tap up here. I don't know if you guys have tap in the States or wherever else you're listening to this. Um, basically, you just tap the card and it automatically pays. He's sitting there with the thing on the machine and looking right at me going, uh, hello. I'm like, what card do you have, sir? Oh, it's credit. Yeah, because sorry, I didn't look at my fucking crystal ball I have off to the side here and, and saw you had a credit card. My bad, sir. You know what? That was my fault. What a fucking idiot, man. Why Why don't people just tell me? It, it happens more than once that people just don't tell me what kind of card they have. And, then, like, sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, sorry, it's debit. Like, I was supposed to automatically know you had a debit card out without even showing me. And sometimes they'll ask them debit or credit, and they won't say a fucking word. They'll just <laughs> ignore me. Like, I'm supposed to automatically know. It's like, oh, oh yeah, he's pulling out his wallet? Oh, he's definitely pulling out a credit card. I'm going to hit the credit button. And it happened the one time where I thought it was a debit card. I got so pissed off. I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to ask him. I'm going to hit the debit machine or the debit button. I hit the debit button. You know what comes up on the screen? Wrong card. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's credit. Like, oh, thanks for telling me. Because then I would have actually put it in. And we would have been done with this transaction. You would have been on your way. And I don't have to fucking deal with this. Now the line's getting bigger. Because of your (laughs) stupidity and not telling me what kind of fucking card you have customers come on man unbelievable man i know it's a customer service industry and i gotta be nice you know i just saw so- uh, i just saw something you're gonna like what's that just saw it on twitter you can pre-order your first figurine of carmella 
Wow. She's got Carmella's a, getting one. She's got a figure. Finally. Finally. That's some good news after that rant. Yeah. Okay. And on uh, Monday, I don't know if you guys have holidays there in the States. We have family day. I don't know what the States is on Monday. I know they have something. We have family day. <laughs> it's the worst holiday ever. But it's a, it's a Monday off and usually go to a collectible show. And the guys finally got my Alexa Bliss action figure for me. Oh, so, so Corporate finally. Cappy. Getting his Alexa Bliss figure. It's only been finally. two months waiting for it to I finally think, come in. I think I have four. I have four. I got two page, one with a WWE title, which is really rare and odd that he has. That she's holding a WWE championship. Um, the other one with when she had both uh, WWE and NXT women's titles at the yeah, same the, time. The elite figure. Yeah, the elite Ooh. figure. President's Day. Thank you, Tyler Jones. Yeah. It's President's Day. Okay, so that's clarification on what Monday is. It's t- uh, President's Day. Thank you, Tyler Jones, for that. Um, so, yeah, I also have a Kevin Owens and a Seth Rollins Money in the Bank one, which is pretty rare as well. If you guys find one of those, get one of those. Apparently, those are rare. So when you find one, yeah. fucking snatch it right I, away. I got too many to talk about on the yeah, podcast. He's got lots. Let's <laughs> say that, ladies yeah. he's, he's, he's I don't cool. want to bore you with all my yeah. entire wall of, of figurines, so we'll just get uh, into the lowdown show. Yeah, let's get into it, and we'll get into your tweets out there, guys. And uh, I organized it a little bit better this week, okay? I own, I'm only going to do this from now on because it's easier and, and Twitter does not know how to organize my tweets. So I've gotten sort of through this. So basically, I'm going to send out one tweet per week and it'll be on the Wednesday, so the day after SmackDown. And that's a tweet where you tell me all your questions and thoughts for Raw and SmackDown. It makes it way easier and I can organize it better. So we're going to do it. We'll start off with Glorious Greg. At Gilly929 on Twitter, he puts, I hate how Raw rushed Bailey winning the women's championship and Raw was just hashtag dumpster fire. Yeah, well, I agree. It's every goddamn week. It's a dumpster fire, but a lot of people have different opinions about Raw this week, and we'll get into that. Owens turning on Jericho and Joe's promo, Joe, Joe's promo managed to get a 2 out of 10. Hashtag. God. I can't believe I agreed to do this. SmackDown was great. The main event triple threat match was awesome. And Bray beating Cena cleanly twice in days is just hashtag glorious. SmackDown gets a 9 out of 10. This would have gotten a 10 if Chince McMahon. So if you guys don't know who that is, that is uh, James Ellis or Ellsworth wasn't on my screen. Also, hashtag... And I hope SmackDown tries to build its tag division because AA is lacking in teams. However, good show. And I think that's right because the te- they sort of did something better this week. And we'll get into that in my SmackDown review. But I do agree. They need, they need a little bit more. The whole roster in SmackDown needs a little bit more to be, you know, 100% the A show. It is the A show in my opinion. I guess a lot of us out there's opinion. but It needs a few more of those top stars to yeah. make it, you know, really click. Yeah. So next set of tweets will come from Tyler Jones at Tyler Jones 22 on Twitter. He puts Raw had like three or four good segments this week. Joe was good. Didn't expect Jericho break up this soon. I'm heartbroken. Five out of ten. You and a lot of us. I was watching it with him and it was heartbreaking for both of us. to. He gave Raw a five out of ten, which is a good rating. And he also puts and the. Versus Henry match with <laughs> somewhat entertaining. God. SmackDown was good as usual. Triple threat match was really fucking awesome. Yeah, I agree. It's freaking unreal. And I'm liking the buildup of Harper. Yes. The, this is, I love the, okay, I can agree with Tyler Jones here because Harper getting the perfect buildup right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the Battle Royal next week. I'm just going to throw it out there. I hope it's not the fucking rumor, which we'll get into later. Um, so I really hope Luke Harper does win it because I think he could be a key part in the rumored ch- triple threat match for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Uh, last tweet from Tyler Jones puts, Mickey James still a MILF, but those bell bottoms are fucking annoying. Overall, good show again. <laughs> Seven out of ten. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. She's had those for a long time, man. That's just her, uh, and they and they haven't changed their music either. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people that I think it was JD that said the he thinks her her music should change. I don't know. I don't and mind it. It, it does because she's a heel. It, it's too like face for her. I think she, maybe she should have like a heelish theme. Maybe CFO Dollar Sign is making a new one right now. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but as for the attire, I don't know. It's just her classic attire. I don't want her to change that. No. Remember when she used to like. 
wrestled Daisy Dukes in that weird top back in the day when she was feeding with Trish. That was interesting. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, next set of tweets, Casey Salvis at Salvis94 on Twitter. <laughs> they always great tweets here. Yeah, I'm sure he's ecstatic that his Montreal Canadiens hired Claude Julien. Yeah, I guess so. I talked to him about that. Uh, for once, Raw was really good. The women's match was amazing. Good for Bailey. She deserves it. Owens attacking Jericho was gold. Jericho will be so over now. Pretty good. Seven out of ten. But rain still sucks. He's always got to <laughs> add the rain still sucks part. That's a high rating, though. I, I, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, and we respect that. But I'm saying. Right I think now, people are just a, given a high rating because Raw is usually horrific. And it was an okay show this week. Okay. And it, it makes it seem like it's a, a great it was a, show. A, a tiny bit inches above par, in my opinion. And we'll get into that later. Uh, he put SmackDown was awesome. Every segment was interesting. The triple threat was amazing. Great to see Bray pin Cena again. Yeah, d- d- twice in three days. Bray's pin Cena. Uh, well, no, he didn't. Because he pinned Styles. What the fuck are you guys talking about? No, he pinned Styles' elimination oh. chamber. Oh, he did pin Cena. Yeah. Did, did Bray pin Cena in the elimination yeah. chamber? Okay, I, I, foggy. I'm sorry, guys. My mistake. Can't wait for Bray versus Orton at WrestleMania 10. Out of 10. We got wow, our perfect rating perfect here. 10. Perfect rating. And just for that, I got to play it. The perfect rating. 10. You'll get the 10 thing. I know that's for the list of 10, but we got our first perfect rating for SmackDown from uh, you fans out there. So thank you, Casey, for your tweets, as always. They're always interesting. Uh, next set of tweets comes from Irrelevance. Oh, here at we go. Four, Lauren. <laughs> so Raw was actually good. Four highlights. Samoa Joe attacking Sammy, and Joe's interview was awesome. The women's championship match was good. New Bailey would win. And where did Dana come from? Three months and she just pops up. Made no sense. <laughs> oh, she's been training for that, uh, I don't know, uh, bodybuilding competition. Sure. Yeah, she get more butch. Uh, <laughs> oh, and the segment that legit made me cry, you will be missed. And he has the painting with rest in peace. Uh, I want that Jericho. painting. That, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I want that painting. I don't care if uh, they put that available in the shop in like in like a picture form. I want to get it. That's yeah. that's phenomenal. He also puts in my boy <laughs> destroyed the bug dog once again. The bug dog. <laughs> He's the called the bug dog. dog. The big dog. Two weeks of crushing <laughs> reigns means the burial of Braun at Fastlane. Fuck Roman Reigns. But this Raw was one of the better ones of the brand split. So 5 out of 10. Oh, and... <laughs> for SmackDown Live. It was an awesome show. Loved every segment, to be honest. I love Wyatt with the belt. And the fact that the Wyatt... That the fact that Wyatt was attacked pre-match. And he won the great triple threat clean by pinning Cena is amazing. I actually really agree with that. 8 out of 10 he gives it. For Orton to give up his spot at WrestleMania got me sad because I'm, uh, but I'm sure that the Battle Royal will be good. Oh, and one more thing: Did you know that <laughs> isn't on SmackDown? I thought wow. was on SmackDown. <laughs> okay, I think he's 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 taking abuse of this <laughs> the bronze sound. Yeah, <laughs> we need, we're gonna have to put a limit on the bronze sound. Clips <laughs> oh my now. god, I gotta put the limit on the bronze sound. Look, clip. Three what? bronze clips per person here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, next to the tweets comes from Gullen or Colin at Gamma and you won. Uh, he doesn't have any, so don't worry about it. He puts Raw started off terrible. But the last hour with Jericho and Bailey winning the title was awesome. Hopefully she retains. Doubt it. Uh, SmackDown was cool all around, but not sure about Bray Norton and whoever, I guess, will actually face Wyatt at WrestleMania. Wow. Simply put, yeah. It's, it's all up in the air. We'll see. I mean, if they have seven weeks, who knows what could happen. So There's also Colin that mentioned uh, to us that apparently Eva Marie is – quit WWE and is going to be an actress until I see the official transcript then I will celebrate and rejoice <laughs> and I will play we will play the celebrate good times theme yeah. on the podcast and our last set of tweets comes from you, you love so good to me that's right they come from at real Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV on Twitter 
the winner of the 2016 NHBWP fan or Twitter fan of the year, guys. If you're wondering why he's an interest team, that's because he won that award. So if you guys want to have your own interest team, and we have some different. We're doing Twitter fans of the month. So if you're a Twitter fan for February, all of March, you will get a entrance theme, and we will decide that at the end of the month. So we'll get into real Michael Chow's tweets. He puts, Raw gets a rare 7 out of 10 from me for my hometown San Jose Sharks girl, Bailey, winning the title in Festival of Friendship. Jericho feud mid-carding WrestleMania and Lesnar Goldberg feud main eventing WrestleMania. I don't get you, WWE creative. <laughs> what the fuck? And he has the gif of Mr. McMahon giving the finger and running away. <laughs> Question. Is Charlotte Street ruining the Raw's women division? SmackDown Live is better because there's no street gimmick to hold them back. Yes, because you automatically know Charlotte's winning it back every every pay-per-view yep. if she loses it at yep. Raw. 100%. Uh, he put SmackDown Live 9 out of 10. Missed the 10 because of Orton ending. I see what they're doing in another case of WWE trolling the fans. <laughs> Interesting. But if Orton does forfeit his mania spot, Rumble would make no sense. And the win should have went to Jericho or The Undertaker. Yeah, I agree. I really hope that Orton actually stays in that main event. I really hope so. But, the, you know, again, there's or, seven weeks. if Orton forfeits it, who did he beat? Who was the no, final two in no, the Royal Rumble? No, <laughs> The big dog. No. The guy will automatically be given the Royal Rumble. No, win. I freaking hope not. And no question for SmackDown Live. I just want to bring up how long we've been Eva Marie free. <laughs> you guys, the gift of Alexa Bliss going boo hoo. I really do not miss Eva Marie whatsoever. <laughs> I can't say that I miss you, honey. Uh, yeah. Uh, sad for Eva Marie, but I really don't fuck. No one cares. Who cares? Here's a little violin for Eva Marie. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's get into the review parts, guys. And we'll start off with Raw. Raw. How I love Monday Night Raw. Raw is war. Raw is. <laughs> <laughs> Raw is dumpster fire. Hashtag, official hashtag of No It's Bart Wrestling Podcast. Dumpster fire. Let's get into it. Opening segment. We open a show off with Stephanie McMahon. If Mondays didn't suck enough, we open with Stephanie McMahon. Every week, they got to have something to do with the authority figures. Yeah. Unbelievable. So she starts talking about how Mick Foley is taking the week off, and she says she doesn't blame him for that, uh, him botching and making fun of Samoa Joe last week. Are basically not giving a shit about him. Okay, sure, Steph. Then out comes No Man Gains. Of course, we got to open with Steph, followed by No Man Gains. So we've gone from bad to worse already in the first <laughs> five minutes of the show. This is why Raw sucks and why people hate it every week. Are they clueless back there? They wonder why we hate Monday Night Raw. It's because of this. The first five minutes of the show. I think they just love trolling us. You just made it. like half the country switch to channel in the first five minutes of your show. They love it. They love doing that. Honestly. Uh, he says he does not want to wait for Fastlane, wants Strowman tonight. You know, she's the big dog. I don't want to wait longer. I'm, I can kick Strowman's ass now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Stephanie goes on by saying that she wants to give the fans what they want and goes on by saying that they don't like Roman. Well, duh. What? Boy, wait, wait, when did you figure that out? It, it, they've been booing him for like a year and a half. <laughs> Are they doing the Daniel Bryan thing with him? I really hope not. I really hope this is not like Steph, you know, remember how like Steph hated Daniel Bryan? hope this is not the same treatment. I pray to God it's not the same treatment. Uh, Steph says, unlike them, she cares about Roman. And basically says that if Roman takes on Strowman tonight, Roman may even not make it to WrestleMania. Well, wouldn't that be a gift? Uh, (laughs) The gift of Strowman. The gift of Steph. So she books Strowman versus Mark Henry instead. Yeah. (laughs) Roman threatens to get involved. And out comes the club. Uh, I cringed so hard. I'm like, what the fuck do they got to do with this? They all, for some reason, they're like, oh, we don't like how Roman's treating you, Steph. When do you guys ever give a fuck about what anyone cares about? <laughs> you guys never did New Japan. You only cared about the Bullet Club. That was it. It was the Bullet Club or nothing. You come over here and now you have a soft spot for Stephanie McMahon? What the fuck is this watered what, down shit? Every heel has to have a soft spot so for them? So stupid. And they want Reigns two on one. Stephanie likes it, books it, saying in honor of Teddy Long, he's she's gonna book a handicap match. Is she No, it is was, she high? It was because no, she said it because she said holla holla holla. 
Okay, I really hope it wasn't the other way around because, you know, he was basically famous for tag teams, not handicaps. No. Okay, just so we're clear there. I yeah. thought she meant the other way, and I was really, really pissed off. I'm like, did they really fuck that up? No. She could, How dare yeah. they? Anyways, with the first match is Roman Reigns versus the club in the two-on handicap. Oh, yeah, because like, uh, the, the Roman Reigns really has a lot to do with the tag team champions yeah, right now. This was just terrible. Awful. Just poorly done. Another way to make Roman Reigns look strong. Makes the tag team champions look terrible against one guy. Yeah. So near the end of the match, both club members get in and start uh, attacking Roman Reigns. Uh, they try to set up the magic killer. No, nope. Roman Reigns breaks free. The club runs away and just pathetic ending to the first match of the show. Again, first half hour of the show sucked. You want to get people to – you, you're a three-hour show, and you want to get people to sit there and keep watching. But so far, 30 minutes into the freaking three-hour show, you made everyone want to change the channel <laughs> or throw the remote at the TV. <laughs> and break the TV. One or the other. <laughs> Terrible. You look at SmackDown, they got you locked in the first five minutes of the show. Raw, nothing happens until like halfway. So, whatever. We got a festival of friendship promo. They were doing this throughout the night, highlighting like all the friendship moments for Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Just the build up to that festival of friendship. It was Understand beautiful, that. wasn't it? You know, I shed a tear, you know, it was that yeah. nice. We get New Day and the Bo Dallas thing here. Oh, my God. They come out with the blueprints for the New Day ice cream. Like, everyone gives a shit about the New Day. They, the crowd sounds like they give a shit, but deep down, they don't care. They, they're just doing that what for a reaction. What has the New Day become? I don't know. They went from being the longest reigning WWE tag team, tag team champions of ever, ever to, to this. With Titus O'Neil. To and wanting their own ice cream. Bo Dallas. They start making fun of Bo Dallas. It leads to Kofi Kingston versus Bo Dallas. <laughs> sure. Um, the match was meh. Okay, nothing special. Bo looked like a freaking local jobber out there. What the hell happened to that guy? <laughs> guy was like, had two different size knee pads on. He grew a really shitty beard. And he, he just looked skinnier. He looked and, like a local a, jobber. And he had a generic uh, singlet on. If I tuned in halfway through that match, I wouldn't have thought that was Bo Dallas. I would have been like, oh, Kofi's facing a local jobber. That makes sense. Oh, wait, it's Bo Dallas. Huh. Could you believe that? <laughs> Could you believe that? <laughs> At one point, he even grabbed the ice cream blueprints and ripped it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, poor blueprints. Oh, not going to get my new day ice cream. So sad. Sad day. And Kofi wins with the SOS. Get them shouting. There you oh, go. Whatever. Sure. Why not? <laughs> We'll move on from that. Awful. We got Jack Gallagher versus Noam Duh with the beautiful Alicia Fox. Oh, cringe. So backstage before this, Gallagher and Neville had a basically a trash talking moment between each other, you know, hyping their fast lane title match. As uh come to expect. Uh into the match. Very well done. Again, cruiserweights almost save Raw every goddamn week. Uh the match time this week for this match was three twenty eight. If anyone really wants wow. to know. Uh, Gallagher wins with his uh, dro- his corner drop kick. I love it's so Jack crazy Gallagher. how a lot of the cruiserweights have these simple moves that win matches, but actually do it in a good way. Like it, it just, I feel like if we saw our truth win with a suplex, we wouldn't give a fuck. We'd be like, "What the fuck is that?" But if you seen like <laughs> Noah and Darwin with a crazy suplex, we'd be like, "That's the most craziest thing I've ever seen." Because they make it look good. And it makes sense. Hey, you don't have to end it with some crazy, you know, yeah. Superman punch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Glad we, we, we bring Roman Reigns into this. Uh, <laughs> Neville comes out for a stare down. Uh, looking forward to his match at Fastlane. God, Neville I'm really looks so this. creepy, man. Yeah. When I'm really looking face. forward to this. Gallagher versus Neville is going to be a really good match at Fastlane. It's probably going to be the only good match at Fastlane. Yeah, we got uh, the troll versus the penguin. Yep. So we move on to the not so great debut of Emelina. Oh my! And all I could say wow. was it was not worth the wait, Emelina. <laughs> Seventeen week build up. Yeah, she comes out though looking absolutely stunning. I'll give her that. This is probably the only good thing that came out of this. Emma looks fucking ridiculously hot. Zack Ryder, you lucky dog, man. That you get the bang match. You, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit too over <laughs> the top here. <laughs> Um, but yes, he gets to stay at home while he's yeah. injured with that. Uh, there you go. So yeah, at least one thing good came out of it. Uh, but, but, she gets on the mic. She says, the wait for Emelina is over. Now the wait for Emma begins. 
Um, okay. And then she walks away. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck was this? I read something that apparently WWE didn't like the way she was going along with the character. Well, duh, because she likes being the heel. What's ro- What was wrong with heel Emma? <laughs> Nothing. That was Everyone loved heel Emma. So now they're going to transition her back into this role. But apparently they're not completely done with this Emelina type character and they want to continue it with somebody because they wanted it to be like the next cat or sable character oh my god that's so that sucks for Emelina because she's actually a good wrestler and you're gonna dumb her down she doesn't to that? need to be this that. man get out of the past man stop it you're ruining the division this way of course Emma didn't want to do that character because it's not like a wrestling character no it's, so it's whoever the, I can't wait till he finds the replacement for that yeah. character I can't believe who that's gonna be so move on and get Braun Strowman versus Mark Henry your boy <laughs> uh, well at least no one can mistake this for a 205 live match right <laughs> uh, more like a 405 live <laughs> uh, watch can, ma- can you imagine they had a division just of big just guys 405 live man <laughs> You got Big Show, Braun Strowman, Mark Henry to lead the division there, and you can what you can add in Kane. You Kane. gotta make him gain some weight. Yeah, I mean I don't even know who Bring else. back Brodus. You gotta Clay. go around the world and look for some indie guys you know, that are four hundred. Bring pounds. back sweet tea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyways. Uh match was longer than I originally thought it was going to be. It was almost like ten minutes long, so good for these guys. Uh Strowman won. Sure. Uh, Reigns comes out though because you know we can't get enough Roman Reigns on a Monday night uh, looks like he's going to get the upper hand but Strowman destroys Reigns once again thank god but we know why we know what this is building up to if you're going to show Strowman every week beating on Reigns by the time you get the fast lane who's going to win Reigns is going to fight <laughs> or we're going to get the stupid rumored Wrestlemania match and Taker's going to show up and I'm like okay turn switch the channel off get rid of this <laughs> I hope that that's the, no it can't be the main event because Goldberg's going to win the main event what am I talking about Great, but... No, let's move on. I don't want to talk about it. It makes me frustrated. Uh, <laughs> Samoa Joe interview with Michael Cole. Really, really, really well done interview. Uh, Samoa Joe calling everyone out, basically, and taking jabs at everyone. He also takes a jab and a cheap shot at Sami Zayn. And this is basically highlighted out of this interview. Uh, he finishes off by saying, anyone get who gets in his way, they will find out that the creator unleashed the destroyer. Hmm. Mm. God, yeah, she Joe's said so that, uh, or he said that. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, you better be careful. <laughs> um, Sammy, I'm not just happy to be here like Sami Zayn. Yeah. I want to do more than just be here. So, coincidentally, right after this, Sami Zayn faces Rusev. Uh, pretty decent match. It was a good way to put over Zayn without making Rusev look weak. Um, but where was Steroid Mahal? I don't know. Apparently, he's done with. Maybe, maybe he was getting tested finally backstage for a while. That's what violation. I'm saying. I'm like, oh, we finally gonna get the uh, WWE.com update. Jinder Mahal has been suspended for 30 days for breaking wellness policy. Wow, what made you think that? How long did it take you to figure that out? Anyway, surprising note: Sami Zayn is taller than Rusev. I don't know if you guys seen this. Go back and look. Sami Zayn is taller than Rusev. I don't know. It blew my mind when I first seen it. I'm going, what the hell is going on here? I didn't know Russo was that short. I don't know. I, it, to Great. me, it looked weird. Anyway, Sami Zayn won the match with a halluva kick out of nowhere, quoted by Michael Cole. Uh, <laughs> Zayn getting interviewed on stage after the match, but it was interrupted by Samoa Joe's music. And I'm like, oh, boy. Something's going to happen here. Joe then blindsides, blindside attacked Sami Zayn and destroys him. As the destroyer. Pun intended. <laughs> Possible WrestleMania setup? No, I think it's going to be a fast lane match. Oh, I would love it to be a WrestleMania setup, though. Or, I mean, throw in Balor there, have a triple threat match for some, you know, just a normal triple threat match. It doesn't have to mean anything. That'd be great. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But uh, that'd be cool. I like, that, I like this Samoa Joe and So Sami the Cruiserweight match so far and this match are the only matches I'm going to tune into for fast lane so far. Uh, we'll move on. Another Cruiserweight match, Akira Tozawa. Versus Araya Divari. Uh, didn't we see this last week? I feel like we saw this. Like, I feel like I had deja vu, like big deja vu through this oh, match. I just hear deja vu every time I hear uh, Akira Tozawa doing his <laughs> ha! Ha! Uh, Brian Kendrick's on commentary here. Uh, I guess checking out he was checking out his supposed protege in Akira oh, Tozawa. Yeah. Uh, decent match showcasing Tozawa, obviously. Uh, the new, like, it looks like he's going to be the new head guy or the new the guy of the division almost. Oh, like, my. He's going to be a top guy. 
Uh, Tazawa wins with the uh, bridge German suplex. Again, another normal move as a finisher, and it just looks so good. Um, then Brian Kendrick stands up and applauds his new protege. So, because he's a man with the plan. Oh boy, uh, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> so we'll move on to the moment of truth. The uh, Golden Festival Truth? of oh. Friendship. I thought you said no, meant not, Golden Truth. We're not moving on. Where has Golden, Golden Truth, Truth been? Who cares? Monday? I don't care. They don't I want to know where they've been. Why aren't they on TV? Why do they have to be on TV? They don't, they're not serving a purpose to anybody on TV. They're probably on main event. It's all right. <laughs> they have a spot somewhat on TV. I miss you, Golden yeah, You Truth. can watch main event Friday nights on the network if you guys really care. Uh, so we have the Festival of Friendship. Uh, earlier in the night, we had Y2J and Owens talking backstage, and Triple H interrupted them and asked to speak to Owens by himself. So I don't know what's going on there. Something really, really is intriguing me with this. Uh, Y2J comes out with the Vegas Showgirls by his side in a crazy suit. I don't know what the hell he was wearing. And his hat. It was hilarious in that hat. Owens was trailing slowly behind but looking bummed out. And I'm going, "Uh uh-oh, something's happening here. You can already tell by just the beginning that something's going to happen. So the festival uh, starts off by Jericho presenting Owens with gifts. So (laughs) gifts of Jericho. The one was the statue of Jericho. Sculpted up, oh, man. <laughs> God, it, I don't know where, what the hell that thing was. Where did you buy that? Where, <laughs> what alternate universe did you Jericho find that thing in, Jericho said he spent three grand on it or something. <laughs> yeah. Or it was like, yeah, something more. It was like 17 grand or something like that. Uh, it was uh, a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, he also uh, gives the gift of the portrait. Uh, copying the famous Michelangelo picture, but it has themselves photoshopped into it. <laughs> this might be the, the greatest oh photo of God. all time. And a really basic, terrible magician from Craigslist. <laughs> God, <laughs> just <laughs> no one saying my twelve, my nine year old son at home could do magic. We got him a kit, and it's better than this guy. <laughs> And then Jericho uh, put him on the list. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he gives Owens a gift that he would really want was him and Y2J to beat up Goldberg. But right when he's like announcing Goldberg to come out, we go to a com- – we cut to a commercial. And I'm going, what? Like it, it just looked weird and awkward. Like Y2J standing there and nothing's coming out and then we cut to a commercial. I'm like – And he's standing and he says, you're going to get – and then the commercial comes back. Yeah. And he says, finally, he says, it. It. So it's like he's been standing there for the whole commercial. So we come back from commercial, and, oh God, it, there's a lot of people on Twitter where, like, could you imagine if this guy came out and it actually happened? I was, Gilbert. I was Gilbert is still off. alive. <laughs> and I looks the great. exact same as he did. Did this guy, like, not age in, like, the last 15 years? <laughs> How the hell does he look the same? <laughs> Is that that can't be him? That's got to be an imitation of an imitation. That cannot be the real Gilbert. I he looked the same shape, the same beard. He had no extra wrinkles. It's been fifteen fucking years. How the hell does he look that good? Oh, maybe that's DDP yoga. I don't know. Hey, he comes out. Owens quickly puts an end to that and destroys him. <laughs> uh, so great! I finally got that out of the way. Jericho finally says seriously, though, and thanks Owens for everything he's done for him and appreciates their friendship and everything that they've done with each other in the last couple of months. It's basically changed Jericho. Owens says he got Jericho a gift. It was something small, you know, it's not comparable to all these fantastic gifts here. Um, well, at but, first, they, they hug it out. Yeah, Owens is like, you know out. what? I appreciate you spent all this money and uh, all these gifts. You did a good buddy, and they, yeah. they hug it out, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um,. And then he gives him a little, some, a small box. And Jericho's like very happy. He's like, "Oh, it's a new list." And he's happy. And he's, he looks closely and goes, "But why is my name on it?" And he lifts it up. And he lifts it up, and it says the list of KO. And I'm like, "Oh no!" no. <laughs> you see, Owens just like drop his mic and just absolutely kills Chris Jericho here. Beats him up around the ring. Power bombs him like the edge of the ring. But that's a freaking man. That's a hard move to that's take. That's the hardest spot in, of the ring, right there. Like the it, it is a hard spot to take as a wrestler, man. Like, the apron <laughs> hurts. Yeah. Uh, then he power bombs him on that, and then he brings him in the ring and throws him through the TV monitor that's placed there. And there's just glass shattering everywhere. The crowd was like, "Holy shit!" Moment. He throws the painting. Throws mm. the statue. So why Owens? Why man? I know it's early. This why is actually Owens, very why? very early for this, but. Everyone knows what's going to happen here. Owens is going to go into his match at Fastlane with Goldberg for the Universal title. Who is going to screw him over 
for that universal title. Hmm. Wonder hmm. who. Chris Jericho. Wow. I got that there right. You go. But this but was, uh, what was the talk with Triple H? This I I got out of all this, I understood everything but the talk with Triple H, and that just drives me wild. I saw rumors that there's gonna be a NXT takeover angle where Triple H is gonna build a team of top NXT people to take over Raw, like as in like uh Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, apparently Asuka's supposed to be the woman and the revival are supposed to be the tag team. So who knows if that actually happens, but this could be the the, the first seed planted in this NXT takeover if it actually happens. Because hmm. what the hell, man? Interesting. This all happened due to Triple H talking to Kevin Owens. What does Triple H have to do with this? He's telling them all to kick, kill everybody else. Right? So, like, what's going to happen here? So, I, I'm actually intrigued to see what happens. I, I'm very saddened by the friend, the best yeah. friendship of all time breaking up. Yeah, it, it was going to happen, though. Everyone needs to calm down already and <laughs> relax because it, it was going to happen eventually. I know it, it, it's sad that it happened now, <laughs> but you know what? I am not sad. I thought, I thought obviously, it was- as an Owens fan, I'm not sad because now – well, actually, I am sad because now we're getting closer to him losing the <laughs> Universal Championship, but, but then he'll win a minor title at WrestleMania maybe. So I thought it, I thought it was a great – tag team run that they had yeah. together for how many months was yeah, it? It was awesome. It was a good feud. It's definitely, it, it could be, if it was started in 2017, it would have been feud of the year for me or uh, uh, team of the year. I don't know. That'd be, I don't know. You can't consider tag team of the year. I don't know. What it the, would be. It, it's still considered it's like its feud. own category, man. <laughs> Friendship of the year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so move on. Mm. So this was basically like the cool down. We had uh, Enzo versus Cesaro. Oh, yeah, because that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a very good showing. I think the potential for this kind of feud for Enzo and Cass and Cesaro and Sheamus is good. I just wish they would include other relevant tag teams like the club and New Day, but I guess not. But if they're going to go this way, whatever, I can look at this specific thing in the tag team division on Raw as a good thing. Um, it was an okay match, though, but Enzo just got freaking owned. I didn't see anything. It was a one-on-one match. It wasn't yeah, the teams going at it. I didn't see anything it. good out of it. Cesaro won, and there's like more, t- more tension between the teams. I'm thinking it leads to a tag team match for the titles at Fastlane. And then... For the titles? Yeah. Against the Oh, wait, the, the club? club have them. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, I think... Oh, sorry. Okay, that's my WrestleMania prediction. I think there's going to be a triple threat tag team match at WrestleMania. Or maybe Fatal 4 if the New Day get included. But at uh, Fastlane, it's going to be these two for the number one contender. And something's going to happen. Maybe it'll end in a no contest. Yeah, no contest. It's going to be something like that. But that's my prediction. Uh, move in to the main event. And I, I was crazy to think that this was the main event. I honestly thought we were going to end with the Festival of Friendship. Like, I thought that was going to be the end of it. Um, it's from but, Vegas, you know? Yeah, but Bailey and Charlotte, Women's Championship in the main event. So here's the scenario at this point. Women's main event for the title happened three times in the past five months. And what has happened on each time? Charlotte's lost the title. So, Yeah. I had a strong prediction that Bailey was going to win this match. <laughs> and I really wish it didn't, my honest opinion, as a Bailey fan. Uh, but they did, and they're continuing to show how much of a hot potato the woman's title is on Raw. And it's just ruining the division. Terrible. I can't get hype for my girl winning the title this way. It's so fucking hard. Why did, I, why did they not wait till WrestleMania? Have her be the underdog like story. How, as a Bailey fan, it just and it, if I know all you Bailey fans out there are agree with me. It's so hard to accept this because for one, she didn't win it cleanly. Two, she's probably going to lose it before WrestleMania, and she's probably regain it at WrestleMania. And then what? How do you like accept that? What's, why, what's the big? Why did they just build that? it up? Is that she finally won her first title at WrestleMania? What was what was the problem in doing that? I don't know. It was really, and they, have, and they make Charlotte look terrible too yeah. because Charlotte's lost no, she's, four she's, times. Every time she defends the title on Raw, she loses it. She's supposed to be the head girl in the division, and she loses every goddamn time on Raw. Doesn't make any sense. So before the match, Charlotte and Sasha had this little confrontation backstage. Whatever. Uh, I'm like, okay, then Sasha's interfering now. <laughs> so obvious. Into the match, it was very good. Actually, the match itself was good because they act. This actually looked like more of a Bailey from NXT. Than the Bailey we've been getting since her debut. I was impressed because I've been the one saying that Bailey needs to start opening up her moveset a yeah. little more and needs to be getting a little more. This was exactly like watching Bailey versus Sasha at NXT Takeover. The moveset Bailey was was given for this match was incredible. If she wrestles like this all the time, Bailey can get credible again. Because right now, ever since her debut, and as a Bailey fan, it sucks 
for me to say this. I don't like the Bailey character from her debut on Raw. I can't get behind it as much. Um, so Dana Brooks shows up out of fucking nowhere. Like, where did you come from? Like, wh- wh- why? Why? <laughs> well, yeah, because she's been off TV for three months. Yeah. And not had anything to do with any of these women. But all of a sudden, bam, comes back. Ah, makes sense. Makes sense. That makes sense. So we get the figure eight locked in. Sasha comes out. Yeah. Absolutely destroys Dana with that clutch. Hopefully whacking her all the way back to developmental so we don't <laughs> see that fucking mess again. And then... No, Dana even botched on the... To- on the uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so when rope. she came up... Because oh, Bailey came, had yeah, Charlotte in the figure four. When, came, when Bailey came to knock off Dana, if you guys go back and look at it off the rope, she's supposed to fall right away, but she like stopped herself because she was afraid of like hurting herself and then fell. It just looked really bad. Again, another botch by Dana. What? She had one spot. Yeah, to do. <laughs> and then get whacked with the, the thing, which she took okay. The crutch. I hope that whacked her all the way back to developmental, though. And Sasha goes over to the other side and smacks Charlotte in the tit with the crutch. I don't know right if she's in the boob. To hit. I, don't I saw the slow motion replay right in the goddamn boob. <laughs> was she supposed to hit her there? I think she was supposed to hit her in like the neck area because Charlotte was like holding that area after. I'm like... Oh, oh, she missed. <laughs> she hit her right in the tail. Charlotte's probably pissed afterwards. Yeah. What you hit my boob for? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bailey gets up unaware. Okay, so she's actually like unaware that it actually happened. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, if Sasha brings it up next week, and then Bailey like criticizing her. Maybe this is a turn of Bailey finally, or of Sasha Banks finally. Um, and then Bailey to belly for the win. And I, okay, at that point, I didn't care what happened, and I didn't agree with it, but I was happy. I got to be happy for my girl to win the title, her first title, man. It, it, regardless of how it happened, any fan of their their woman has to be happy for her to win a title. Their 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 woman to win a title, and I was ecstatic. I was so fucking happy she won it. I'm probably gonna buy the plaque. I'm gonna buy the plaque with the freaking ring canvas. I'm gonna buy it. I don't care how she won it. It's as soon as it goes out, I'm gonna buy one. So you know what? I'm happy for that. Uh, other than that, I gave Raw this week four out of ten. <laughs> Simply put, I, I I enjoy all of it. There's some bits and pieces that made up the four, but guys, I'm not like you guys. I didn't like Raw this week again. It's like it's they, they, they have all these pieces and they throw it into a goddamn hat and they shake it up, and they dump it, and they're like, "All right, let's go with whatever drops first." Honestly, I just think that people thought like it was a mediocre show this week, but it looked ten times better than the garbage they put on the last eight weeks. Yeah, they made it look like a decent show, but it really was not at all. No, it it's not compact and well structured like SmackDown is, which I would love. So Raw, if Raw was two hours long, we always talk about this. Yeah, it would be well. I, I think it would be better. We would have less criticism because. You just you can have the spots you need to put in in that two hour gap because Raw is way too long. You notice in that third hour that they just is more useless filler shit. But you know WWE won't because they're yeah, making money off the stupid. third hour. And all you have to do is make it two hours, put in this product that you want to be shown, and then whatever's left that you know you would want on Raw but is not that great, and it you know the other stuff beats it out. Put it on a main event. Put it on the main event in the beginning of the show. That's all you got to do. If all it's you that important. Do. But you know what? No, they, they they make money. All they care about is the money. It's all about the money. All about the money. We need that sound clip. Yeah. So I gave Raw this week a a four out of ten. Uh, I'm going. This is okay. my SmackDown review. Oh, okay. It's pointing over here. This is okay. Raw. <laughs> well, let me quickly go through here. Festival of Friendship gets uh, two minus one because they broke it up. <laughs> two minus one. So one. So two point two five six seven. No, it gets a one. Um, uh, Mark Henry being on TV, one. So there's two. <laughs> Samoa Joe, three. And uh, that's it. Three. 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 So three out of ten. See, I, I can even agree with that. You guys have your opinions out there. We accept your opinions. But I'm just going to say I don't think it was that good. And I wish guys. they would have held Bailey to win the title at WrestleMania. Yeah. It would have just meant so much more to yeah. her and to everybody else. But no, they, they did have a good. Ma- I'll give them the. Ma- okay, I'll give them three and a half. Three and a half because the match was good. The, 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 the match yeah. part was good. But poor woman in the Raw Women's Division, man. I feel so bad for them. Sasha looks like she doesn't even want to be there anymore, yeah. and I don't blame her. I think she'd benefit more on SmackDown, to be honest. Absolutely, she'd be. A, the, can you imagine a Sasha in Alexa Bliss feud? I, I know it's the two-year girls, but <laughs> they could put on an incredible. Just the mic skills alone 
would be freaking insane. I, I don't know how I'd feel about that. And then, or you can do the whole Sasha and Becky thing. Maybe Sasha goes heel and turns on her best friend Becky. I mean, they've had their their feuds in NXT. You can build from that. So you know, disgusting. disgusting. And man, Mickey James could go face. You know, like, there's so many possibilities on SmackDown, but yeah. on Raw, it's just a black hole of death. Yeah. So we'll get into that. The A, the A show, 100 percent SmackDown review. The blue brand. The blue brand. And we open this segment, or we open the opening segment, we open the show off with Bray Wyatt, the champ that carries the lamp. <laughs> he comes out to the ring to a huge, huge pop from Anaheim. Anaheim's always a great crowd. Uh, he just It just looks beautiful with the title, with the lantern shining on the title in the dark. It just looks... Finally, we've been waiting for this for so goddamn long to be holding a major title, and... Man, I almost like cried in tears of joy seeing this. Um, the crowd chanting, you deserve it. Obviously, he deserves it. Um, guy's been in the company for like, what, 10 plus years. He hasn't said a word. Like, this guy gets put back so much in the last 10 years. Man, like, remember the Husky Harris bullshit with the, the new Nexus and all that crap? Oh, like, this, this, guy's, him. this guy's eating a shit sandwich for the last 10 years. And has he said a word? Has he gone on other radio stations and criticized WWE for his lack of push? No. He sucks it up. He goes to work. He does his job. And he goes home. And this is why he deserves the championship. I love it. This is actually a, the best. This is, you can get behind it. Anyone can get behind this if they know the story of Bray Wyatt. Um, and which Anaheim, California did because they got behind him. Uh, Chang, you deserve it. He says, basically, welcome to the era of Wyatt. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Then we get – I don't know why you'd interrupt at this point if you're, you're just you're just looking for booze. John Cena comes out here to a huge ovation of booze, like massive. And then, you know, you got the, the obvious kids who ah, yeah, yeah, John Cena. They're dressed like John Cena. They already got the merchandise updated. Um, <laughs> Cena says that Bray brainwashed the crowd. Into chanting, you deserve it. He brainwashed them. <laughs> and and uh, says that Bray didn't earn the title okay, like his t-shirt John. says. Okay, John. I'm pretty sure he what? wasn't clean. What? Wait, what? The fuck did he just say? He didn't earn the title on... I could believe at this point, man. You know, what are you talking about, man? I, you must be drunk. Okay. Um... Cena doesn't want to wait uh, for his uh, rematch, so he wants to fight right now for the WWE Championship. Uh, AJ Styles then comes out to huge ovation as well, man. <laughs> Guy's a heel when he gets cheered like this. It's so hard to be a heel when you get cheered like this every week and everywhere you go. It's hilarious. Uh, he starts talking about how it's still about AJ Styles and still the he's still the face that runs the place. He wants to invoke his rematch clause tonight for the title as well. Uh, so there's like a little brouhaha in the ring, everyone wanting their title shot. Dan O'Brien comes out. He agrees with everyone that, that want their rematch clause. So he wants to give Anaheim, California the match that they want and what they want to see and books a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. Wow. <laughs> I can't. At this point, I'm like, that beat Raw in entirety. This is what I mean. The first 15 minutes of this show just beat Raw, and it makes me not want to change the channel. I was glued to my screen after this. I did not want to get up for a drink, for food, or anything. A commercials happened right after this. I'm like, no, no, I'm not getting up. I'm staying here. I'm waiting for that commercial to come back. The little disclaimer they do before coming back from a TV show. I As soon as I hear that, I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I get so freaking excited and amped up. So SmackDown just won off that opening segment already. Incredible. I missed the segment, but from what I heard, yeah. great things. Uh, so we move on to American Alpha versus The Ascension. Wow. So we follow up the opening, that incredible opening segment with an unreal match. No turmoil, no clusterfuck, just straight up tag team match, American Alpha versus The Ascension. Unbelievable. I'm surprised Teddy Long didn't come out and book this match. <laughs> Guy's getting ducked in the Hall of Fame. Why didn't he come out and book a tag team match? That was probably a little fault for him SmackDown this week. <laughs> they didn't talk about Teddy Long. Uh, this match was good. It was simple. It was clean. It was a great match. 
really close uh, and a good showing by the Ascension. Like they they kept up with AA here and almost won the match. I know everyone's criticizing that they got buried again. They didn't get buried. Getting buried is them losing in a minute and a half. This match was like almost ten minutes long, and they actually had a good showing here. They put on a good match. They 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 almost won the match. They they killed the shit out of AA. AA was like sweating balls after that was probably the longest match they've had come from all their other matches combined from raw you guys criticize the ascension relax a little bit man that actually was a good showing and it made sense for a to win they're the tag team champions they have to look strong um so the usos cut a promo on them after basically saying that they're they're putting a on notice and they're coming for them good so there you go right there that just beat look how good their their tag team division is Finally using it properly. So it's going to be interesting to see what they go, where they go from here because I don't think the Ascension's out of it yet. Um, I think they're still going to be within title reason. The like Ascension's gonna, finally getting a shot somewhere. Yeah. I, I could see a, a double heel number one contenders match. The Usos versus the Ascension. I could see that. Um, you know how I feel about heel Usos. So. Yeah. <laughs> so move on. We got uh, Ellsworth and Carmella backstage here. And Ambrose is walking around looking for uh, Baron Corbin. Ellsworth gives Ambrose like this attitude answer. Like, I don't know, I haven't seen him. Uh, Dan O'Brien comes in and shows up. Uh, he doesn't know where Corbin is either. Uh, and Ambrose has all this like build up anger he needs to unleash. And he goes, wait, you got some unfinished business with... Uh, with James Ellsworth, how about you guys uh, have a match here tonight? And books it. Books Ambrose versus Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, really? <laughs> this is going to be sad. So Ellsworth comes out to the ring. Uh, he introduces Carmella in, like, a heel fashion. So I guess it's heel Ellsworth. No one cares. <laughs> Everyone, no one gives a shit about James Ellsworth. He, <laughs> he's had his time, and he, it, it, it's past his, like, he needs to go. He, he's the expiry old. date's over. Yeah, it expired last year. Um, Ambrose music hits, but no Ambrose. Where, where is he? Um, Baron Corbin comes out and he's dragging Ambrose by his ripped ass shirt. I'm like, oh my god, Baron Corbin looks so good right now. They're doing such a good job. And he just starts whooping his ass. And he does a deep six on the side stage electrical table. And there's sparks start flying everywhere. And there was this one camera spot that everyone kept talking about. <laughs> The camera zoomed in on a plate of cookies that were just happened to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's on Twitter going, oh, I hope those cookies are okay. <laughs> I don't know why they're there. Why is there a plate of cookies on top of an electrical table? The plate of cookies. You, like, you knew there was going to be a spot there. Why did someone leave a plate of cookies? The- and the camera zoomed in on it. <laughs> I think it was trying to zoom in on Ambrose, but they zoomed in on the or, cookies. Or were they just far. trolling it? Were they like, wow, we're going to zoom in on this plate of cookies. <laughs> Why not? Uh, maybe they knew who didn't. They want to get him fired, so they did it on purpose. So they show, hey, Vince, look, the guy left a plate of cookies in the spot area. But anyways, I'm loving I, I'm loving the build of yeah. this feud now. The Ambrose versus yeah, Corbin. This looks like it's got it's got a, a lot of promise. potential written like, all over it. It, it just looks so good. Like, the, Two both physical guys, guys. Yeah. You know? Or, and like... <laughs> Corbin dragging him out. Like, yeah, and you're not going to get the whole... I know everyone's like, oh, what about Lesnar and Ambrose? They're two physical guys. Yeah, but Baron Corbin's not Brock Lesnar. Baron Corbin has a lot to prove. Lesnar didn't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. So we'll move on. We had Daniel Bryan, Nikki Bella backstage here. Now I'm looking at the TV screen. Uh, Daniel Bryan talking about how Nikki and Natty need to settle this and move on and just to end this fighting. Nikki says she's trying to, but Natty keeps uh, attacking her from behind and, you know, cheap-shotting her. So Daniel Bryan says he's got an idea that... He, that he thinks that she will like Natty overhears this interrupts and says, Oh, so you're going to give her what she wants because she's your sister-in-law and that Nikki gets everything because she's with John Cena. So pulling the whole John Cena card and, and sister-in-law card out. Um, then they start fighting and Daniel Bryan got so pissed off here. Like he was screaming. Like I'm talking about screaming. Like when he would yell, no, back when he was yelling, no, no, no. <laughs> like he got so goddamn mad. And he wants him to stop fighting. He says, since you guys fight everywhere but the ring, next week he books a Falls Count Anywhere match between Nikki Bella and Natalia. Building matches for next week for you to tune in to actually care about. Yeah. Um, in a way, I think a cage match would have made a little bit more sense because mm-hmm. he does say, you guys fight everywhere but the ring. Wouldn't it make sense to seal them in that ring with a cage? Oh, if they want to fight outside, let them fight yeah. outside. I guess I, that also makes sense to you. But fall, look at that. It makes me want to tune in next week to a feud that everyone actually cares about. And it doesn't have to be for a title. You just build a feud. Exactly. Right where there, what I just said. You built a feud based not on a title. And you want people to tune into next week. Right there. Perfect booking. 
perfect. This is why SmackDown is the A show, and what why WWE internet darlings love SmackDown more than Raw. Which they should, because SmackDown just makes way more sense than Raw. SmackDown has three good women yeah. feuds going yeah. on. You people that like Raw out there, man, you're, you're why I have trust issues with anything. Just <laughs> plainly plainly put. Uh, we get a backstage promo here from Dolph Ziggler. A lot of people are criticizing this, but I actually thought it was well done. Um, uh, I'm not sure if this feud will continue with Kalisto and uh, Paul Cruz. I'd like to see Ziggler maybe face Dillinger. If Dillinger yeah. gets up before Mania, well, that'd apparently be good... Apollo Crews, they're playing the injury angle because Ziggler hurt him at Elimination Chamber. He took a chair and stomped well, his then, ankle. So Get Dillinger up here. Have him face Dolph Ziggler. But I would also love to see Dillinger get in the main title picture on NXT if that ever happens. So we'll see. But if Ziggler has no feud going to WrestleMania... Andre the Giant, more about a royal is going to be put. Yep. Anyone that looks like they need a feud and they can't figure out anything by WrestleMania, they'll be in the Andre the Giant, more about a royal. That's the only, like, that's like the perfect spot for them. That's like a planted match for WWE to, like, fall back for their, on. For their lower end yeah. guys. <laughs> um, we got Mickey James versus Becky Lynch next. Love the direction that this is going to. Uh, it looks like it's going to continue. Uh, hopefully they add to it, though, if they continue it. There's still seven weeks till Mania to book the SmackDown Women's title. So we'll see what happens. Match was really good. It was basically an Elimination Chamber rematch. Uh, Mickey putting over Becky was the, for, for the most part, and is the right decision. And that's why she's back. And that's why she's back here for two years. She's here to put people over. Um but there's the one spot at the end where Mickey actually acts her like she separated her shoulder. The ref is like calling for the ring doctor, but she plays possum. Mickey James plays possum here and rolls and like kind of chick kicks her to Becky. I think that's what the chick kick is, and then wins. Wow, I was surprised. The dirty victory by yeah, Mickey, and it I makes like sense. It, it you, you can't criticize. Mickey James winning here against Becky, and people I saw on Twitter like, "Oh, Becky should have won this. This makes zero sense." I'm like, no, "No, it wasn't like she won clean." Exactly. That's what Mickey James is. She's the heel, and that's the perfect way. And that we haven't seen that. When's the last time we saw someone yeah. win by and playing Mickey James? Possum? She just came back. She needs to get a win to get her yeah. back rolling again. And so, she already lost to Becky at elimination. Again, game another game. women's match where I didn't, it, I didn't hate it. I loved it. It, it made me want to get into it. It makes me want to tune in next week. Mm. I wonder where Mickey James and Becky Lynch are going to go from this. Can you imagine what they would have done with Mickey on Raw? She probably would have been Barry. squashed to Nia yeah, Jax. She would have been week. squashed to Nia Jax for one <laughs> week, and then we would never see Mickey James ever again. Uh, let's move on. We got Naomi and Alexa's in ring segment here. Fantastic. Uh, Naomi, as a champion, gets her entrance job. <laughs> How? I don't know. She's got one of the greatest entrances out of all the women, and she gets her entrance job. As the first cha- like her first entrance as a champion. champion. Whatever. Maybe it's because of the whole leg thing. They didn't want to like show her like walking in her entrance, right? Um, so she's getting interviewed by Renee Young. Renee asks her uh, what about the knee brace and the apparent injury. So I, I've read into it. It's not a real injury, people. Relax. It's storyline. Uh, Naomi says that she didn't feel it. Due to the uh, adrenaline of winning the title, she didn't feel it until she got back to her hotel room. Uh, she says it took her eight years to get here, and that she's excited for taking her title into her hometown at WrestleMania. Interrupted by Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Right on cue in perfect timing. And she just savage as oh hell throughout God, this was entire great. segment, man. She's so good. She's such an elite heel, like I always say, man. She just rips apart Naomi here. Get the whole ESPN 30 for 30 thing lights out the failure of Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> or she says, it took you eight years. Yeah. It took me five months. <laughs> like, just so savage. And I'm like, my God, this is so good. This is so good. And well, once again... What is this? Another woman's segment where it makes you want to tune in every goddamn week. That's three, w- Raw. That's three. Raw doesn't even have one. No. <laughs> uh, that's sad. So Alexa says that, yeah, you should bring your fan, Bring all your family to WrestleMania because I'm going to show them what a real champion looks like and who the real champion is, Alexa Bliss. Uh. God. I, I can't handle this stuff, man. And she it's said something so really cool as she walked out. She's like... Uh, Feel that or something like that. Or feel, feel that feel glow. Feel that glow. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, unreal. My, it's so good. This is only a promo, but it was so good. And it led so over good. to Talking Smack where Alexa yeah. was just going off on her again. Yeah. So and, uh, I very, very like the direction. Who would have thought I would have liked a Naomi feud? Who would have thought? She's finally yeah, getting I her chance. I told you she was going to get a shot on, on I like it. I like it. 
But I liked I, I criticized team. it at first because of, uh, based on what she did with Team Bad for the year before that, and like oh, it's just I couldn't see anything good out of it. But you know what? Man. She worked on her in-ring skills more. Her looks like she's worked on her mic skills. This whole new gimmick she's portraying now is amazing. And I, I don't, think I, the, I think pairing her with Alexa Bliss is perfect yeah. for her. There's a lot Alexa's of promise in Naomi. Fantastic yeah. heel. So uh, move into the main event: John Cena, Bray Wyatt, and AJ Styles. Triple threat for the WWE title. So when Bray's making his entrance here and he finishes it, Luke Harper is standing there. And I'm like, oh, oh, like it shocked the shit out of me. I was not, I literally was not expecting that. I'm like, oh my God. And then just attacks Bray Wyatt before their match. Wow. That, the match hasn't started yet. And I'm like, this is probably the best triple threat match I've ever seen. Just because of that. So great for Luke Harper for doing that. And then again, that's pushing himself towards this title picture and this main event picture. Um, so into the match, really, really good. So good. You got a match with Bray Wyatt, AJ Styles, and John Cena. How is it not going to be good? <laughs> uh, so Raw, just Raw wishes they can produce shit like this. You and, mean gold like this. Yeah, gold shit. like this. So we even got like a table destruction spot. <laughs> Unreal. Uh, such a good match. Styles is looking for the phenomenal forearm at one point. Cena knocks him off. And as he turns around, right into the sister Abigail, and Bray Wyatt pins John Cena for the second time in three days. They're finally making him look strong. Finally. After how many years? God. And Bray retains the championship. Clean. Clean. On Cena. Twice. Yeah. So while Bray's celebrating, Orton's music hits. It's like old music, too. It's uh, his voices, not his new Wyatt theme. Uh, so Orton comes out. He says that the Royal Rumble and all of his privileges, it, he, or he's won the Royal Rumble and all the privileges it's come with. However, as long as Bray is the master and he is the servant, he will not face Bray at WrestleMania. Wow. Wow. And he, he pledges his allegiance to Bray Wyatt. He opens his arms for Bray. And then Bray gets on the mic and says, Orton now has the keys to the kingdom. So they can go many ways with this. What an unreal ending, man. And it just oh, it, it opens my so many doors to like, what the hell are they going to do? Exactly. And it's perfect. You don't want to go into WrestleMania already predicting everything. Yeah. You want shit like this. It's you have seven weeks to build. SmackDown is seven yeah. weeks. You don't want to already have the main event already booked now. You have to build it. I, again, like I said last week, I think Randy Orton is going to be uh, his servant up until the week before WrestleMania. And that's when he's going to turn on Bray. And what a perfect spot to do it. I think they're going to do it in an unreal way too. Like they got something planned. They have this like pot brewing on the stove yeah. right now. And they're just like, oh, I can't wait till it's done. You never trust the Viper. You <laughs> SmackDown know? is just so fucking And good. then I've uh, heard people saying like about the whole cross brand jumping crap. If like- Roman Reigns shows up next week, I'm giving SmackDown a 1 out of 10. I don't care what else happens <laughs> next week. I'm giving it a 1 out of 10. I do not care. It'll make, it'll, I'll have one moment on the list of 10. It'll be SmackDown letting Roman Reigns show up on their show. Or you could have Randy Orton try to go over to Raw and take the Universal title. Uh, it's so tough. It's but I, I just assume that, that it's, they're just playing possum with yeah. us and Orton's going to turn on him week before. And again, there's so many doors. In my opinion, if I had to guess, Luke Harper's going to win the Battle Royal next week. That's just. I know it's like a. Uh, it's almost predictable, but it makes more sense. A I think people threat. people want to see these three Wyatt members face each other for the title. Why not give it to them? <laughs> I think they will. I think they're going to build it for seven yeah. weeks. I, I I'd love to. You've see You've almost got two full months yeah. to build for I, this. Could, who would have thought that I would have loved? Could, could you imagine five years ago me saying, "I you know what? I'd love to see a Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and Luke Harper main event WrestleMania." <laughs> nope, because nope. that's what SmackDown's done with the whole Wyatt family thing. That, SmackDown has built main event superstars in what? It's been six months since the draft. Look what they've done so far. So is SmackDown the, is literally the land of opportunity, like they always. And say. I could see that being a re- if they keep building it like they are right now, that could be WrestleMania main event. I love, but we all know what the main event's going to be. Going to be if, fucking if, Goldberg. If, if Goldberg was the title, that's your main event already. It's going to be it. Uh, so I gave SmackDown a 9 out of 10 this week. I didn't give it a perfect 10. I think basically do... And it's tough. Uh, I don't know. I, it's tough. Maybe I should give it a perfect 10 because I can't think of a moment where I didn't like it. No, I can't. No, I think maybe the Cena comment. <laughs> Fine. 9.5 out of 10 I give it. The point five for Cena's retarded comment in the beginning of SmackDown. I'm giving it nine because I missed the first hour. Okay. See? Again, it just beats it. 
And then the, the second hour was fantastic, what I, what I saw. So I just love the fact that I can tune into SmackDown every week and not get disappointed. And it's followed up by 205 Live. It's just you're giving the best gift ever for Christmas, followed by next year's Christmas right after. I know. And it sucks because <laughs> I wish I, I, could, I would have to – I have to miss – most yeah, of SmackDown every week. I wish I could miss Raw. Then I have an excuse never to watch but it again. If it continues in that direction, by the time you're done school, you know you just go right back into it. Hopefully, Two Hundred Five yeah. Live was good too. They had T.J. Perkins versus Neville, which was a good match. Yeah. And so, uh, Great Metal Leak made his debut. Great, yeah, it was, it was it good. Was too bad it was showing. fucking crickets in the yeah, crowd. But yeah. it sucks. Again, I always say they need their own their own show at the full sale. It would be a lot better. But uh, yeah, Two Hundred Five so, Live was good too. So so. Getting to our second last segment of the show, the list of 10. I still haven't found a theme song for it. I'm kind of uh, working on a remix of uh, Jericho's and uh, Ty Dillinger's theme. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. Um, so, yeah, again, guys, if you don't know what this, this segment's about, it debuted last week. Me and Cobra Cappy here have five moments of the week each, and we give it uh, two ratings, a list rating, so it makes the list, or a perfect 10 rating. And we'll start off Cobra Cappy. My first moment to go on the list this week is that Emelina's disaster of a debut. Oh, if you can even call it a debut. I don't know what the hell that was. And apparently the 17-week buildup was not worth the wait for any of us because it's now going back to Emma, which we should have had in the first place. Forget the whole Emelina garbage. Yeah, she looked hot. But the <laughs> character was way better as a heel. Yep. And Emelina... You just made the list! And hopefully yep. that's it. Yeah, We see out of that. My first moment is a list moment as well. And that is Strowman jobbing giants instead of jobbers. Thank God there's no more jobbers. But he's moved on to jobbing giants? Oh, yeah. So they give <laughs> Mark Henry this week. Yep. And now it's announced next week is going to be the big show. He's probably going to beat the big show. Yeah, what happened to him setting up for his WrestleMania match with Shaquille Who's O'Neal? next? Bing John Studd? Are they going to resurrect this guy? Big, great Kali coming great back. Great Kali. <laughs> Oh, my God. Just for that, Braun Strowman. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, and that's it, all and I got to say about and that. it's sad because Strowman has, has had potential lately. Yeah. And, and it just, they've ruined him when they do that. All right. Moving on to my next moment. We're going to go with the Festival of Friendship. Okay? Oh, God. This was phenomenal. This was like one of the – like I laughed at every part of this segment until the end good. where I cried. But I didn't actually cry, but it was close. Yeah. But – Every part of the segment was just great. I thought everything that Jericho brought in was perfect. It all made sense. And then having Owens turn on him at the end, it was just pure gold. And for that, it gets a 10. Oh, I love that clip. My next moment is a perfect 10 moment. And that is the start of the Baron Corbin and Ambrose feud. Very, very intriguing. Cannot wait to see where it goes from here. Will the IC title be on the line one one at WrestleMania for once? We'll see. Or I don't know when's the last time it was one on one match. Um, it's best work by Corbin I've seen in a long time. He is definitely a future WWE champion. He could be a top heel on SmackDown. Could easily be feud of the year for SmackDown. Corbin Ambrose has got potential. So for that, I give it a perfect ten. Mm, I I am very intrigued by that feud as well. Moving into my next. Uh, I don't know what you can, what you can call it here, but it's tr- uh, Tyler Bate versus Trent Seven. Man, if you did not watch this NXT oh, yeah. match, the main event of NXT NXT this week was kind of it wasn't a lot, but it was basically yeah. based around this main event. This was a fantastic match for the U- UK Championship, the first time it's being defended. Big match for both these guys, and if you haven't watched it, go back and tune into it. Uh, Tyler Bate winning. Um, just gr- the crowd was so into it too for two UK guys coming over for the first time, and hopefully we get to see more from these UK guys and the UK championship. Hopefully gets build up. Tyler Bates only nineteen years old, so he's definitely got a bright future. That match definitely gets a ten. Yeah, I def I watched it this morning. You're right. That was I, that that'd be on the DVD set next year for best of NXT matches. One hundred percent. That I just love. You know what made the match? The crowd. The crowd was so into it that it actually made the match that much better. And I loved it. I love when a crowd like, can get into that. And that's why I think TO5 Live needs to be at full sale because they can get into a match like that. They can get into a a, a Neville versus Jack Gallagher feud in a, in a main event match like that. So that's why I always say they should be at full sale. But get into my next moment. And it's a list moment to John Cena's 
irrelevant comments to Bray Wyatt in the beginning of SmackDown. Cena, are you drunk, man? Do you not know what you just said? Saying that he brainwashed the crowd or brainwashed the crowd into chanting, you deserve it? Seriously? No, they didn't. We didn't. Saying Bray didn't earn the title like his t-shirt says, earn it. Wrong. Wrong, Mr. Cena. Wrong. He did deserve it. And he deserves everything that he's about to get given to him for the 10 years plus work he's put in the WWE. So for just for that, John Cena. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Cena, I don't know what you were talking about, man. There's no one more deserving than Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, my last list moment goes to, as I said last week, a weekly episodic <laughs> Oh, television show when it's really you know a list show yeah so every week Roman Reigns makes oh, here the list. We go. <laughs> Roman Reigns opening the show making the tag team champions look weak hashtag no man gains I feel like we should have a I'm the guy sound clip for this <laughs> so Roman Reigns as every week from now until probably ever ever are you sure I think he will every week. And every week will. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to get a Roman Reigns, the guy. <laughs> Sound clip. <laughs> and also, I'm giving an honorable mention. It's not even worth a, a list moment, but it's an honorable mention to that. Enzo and Cass being lowered to acting out that cringe KFC Georgia. Oh my god! Yeah, if you guys haven't seen oh it, go watch god. it. What is with that commercial, man? Like, are these guys just here to hype stuff up now? Like KFC chicken? Why don't you give us a match? I don't understand it. I honestly can't. Enzo and Cass, how you doing? You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> That's a great honorable mention. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, it's all right. My next moment. Samoa Joe's backstage interview. Joe's first interview on the main roster, and wow, did he ever kill it. Calls out the entire roster and takes shot at everybody, including Sami Zayn, possibly setting up a Fastlane slash WrestleMania match. Hopefully, you know, both. Um, Samoa Joe is going to be unreal for Raw because his promo work, his in-ring product, and the way he presents himself. Hopefully, they use him properly. Yeah, just for that, Samoa Joe, you get a perfect. Ten... That was a great promo. Yeah. Uh, moving on to my last 10 moment of the week. We got, the, uh, obviously, Alexa Bliss's promo on Naomi on SmackDown. I mean, that was just phenomenal. We already talked about it. Everything about it was great. She's just yeah. a great heel. Um, bringing up stuff of Naomi's past, saying that she's been there for eight years, and Alexa's done more in five months it than she'll was, ever do. probably the great, and, a great, greatest promo I've and seen. And <laughs> her, her facial expressions are just phenomenal, and she gets a... 10... All day. She's worth more than the 10. All I'll day. tell you that. 100. <laughs> My last moment is Bailey versus Charlotte match. The actual match itself. Although I feel like it was the wrong time to give Bailey that title. The match itself and the way they presented it was good. The way they made uh, Bailey look good. Um, just her moveset. It looked like uh, Bailey from NXT. It'd be interesting to see what they do with the title now from now uh, if they make her lose it at Fastlane and what they do with it at WrestleMania because now that Bailey has a title, it's, it looks like it's changing a lot of things. So we'll see what happens. But just for the match itself and for Bailey's moveset, it gets a perfect 10. Yeah, I was definitely impressed by Bailey's new move yeah. that she brought out. Just that. Week. I didn't like what they did with it, but the yeah, match the, itself. The, the was carousel. Good. No, but. Yeah, hot potato action. Yeah, get the hell out of here. So, moving to our last segment of the show, and that is the WWE Headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, our part of the show where we talk about any interesting and important news. In the WWE, we got five topics. Five time. Three ain't enough now. I time. need five. Biggie. Five time. Biggie. Oh, God. Five topics. Number one, don't be reaching out to former women for WrestleMania. No. Um, no. So this is apparently why Kelly Kelly was backstage. She wasn't going to you know, be on Raw last night. Apparently, she was just backstage to discuss her WrestleMania appearance. It's not saying match. But it's saying they're trying to bring women back for an appearance of some sort. Uh, Kelly Kelly, for those of you going to WrestleMania, will be at Access. So look out for if you want to go get your Barbie Blank autograph. Great. Um, they've also contacted Victoria mm. for an appearance at WrestleMania. So wow. It'll be interesting to see Isn't what they do with that. Isn't she still working in the indies? 
Yeah. And I, they also contact, I think it was her name, Lisa something something. I forget what her name is, Von Roshan or something like that. I don't know. Luna? I, Oh, no, that is Victoria's real name. Yeah, oh, I'm like, an Luna's idiot. dead. What the hell am I talking about? Anyway. <laughs> uh, moving on. Darren Young, injury. He is expected to be out for six months following an elbow surgery. Oh, my. Again? Apparently, he injured himself on main event. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the land of injury. <laughs> uh, so, so no Darren more Mer- make Darren Young great again? Not for, not for six months. So, what's Bob Backlund going to do for I six months? go back to his legend, Legends contract, sitting at home doing, you know, nothing, getting paid. Um, so much for Darren Young great again. Yep. Moving on, John Cena taking time off. According Shocker. to the Wrestling Observer, John Cena will be taking time off after WrestleMania. He has a lot of projects planned, and he is not advertised through any SmackDown live events, SmackDowns, or through the pay-per-view Money in the Bank. So that's a thankful note there. John Cena won't be at Money in the Bank, so he has no chance of winning that. He's not going to win his N64. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, that's good though. I mean, yeah. whatever. Cena doesn't have to be there all the time, yeah. and it's better to give other guys opportunities because if Cena's there full time, you know he's always going to be in the main yeah. title picture. Yeah. So I'm sure you guys have heard it already, but Rosa Mendez is officially retired from wrestling. She put out a long post on her Instagram. She's going to pursue her other dreams and be a full time mom to her new kid. You know what? I can appreciate but, that. But uh, I mean, no offense, but I don't even think I really considered her a wrestler anyway. Yeah, but you she know was, what? Good for her to be, a, you know, to be that full time mom, not be on the road all the time. Whatever it be, you know, filming. Total she doesn't need to be there crap. anymore. Really, she doesn't, really doesn't have anything anymore yeah. to do. So yeah. So you know what? Good for Rose Mendez. Yep. Well, at least she knows she got out when she could. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, interesting because I'm actually probably going to buy this or somehow read it online. But oh, Derby no. is releasing the official book of rules and how to and how to break them. <laughs> yes. So the advertised uh, listening about what the book's about goes as follows. There will be commentary and rule revisions from Derby superstars and Hall of Fame worthy referees. There are more than 200 pages of rules, drawings, and diagrams. It is also forwarded by Daniel Bryan, the SmackDown Live GM, and much, much more. There's also there's also uh, rumors of it revealing it also has do's and don'ts at every aspect of the rules in the ring. So maybe Eva Marie should have read it. It will be released on February 28th of this year. So at the end of this month. I'm probably going to read that and get it and read it, man. I I really want to read this book. It looks like they have intriguing. any. I want to see if they have any like funny pictures. It's got like drawings and diagrams or botches in there. Like, <laughs> Can you imagine like how to <laughs> how to do a move and like if you don't, you will botch. <laughs> it's as written right in there. I want to see Dana how Brooks legit this book is, like how watered down it is. I really want to see this book. Um, so if you guys want to go check it out, it comes out on February 28th. Go buy it. It'll be on Amazon and all. Uh, I guess book locations whenever <laughs> is it going to be an audio book it's i think it's going to be an audio book <laughs> i think oh what did i read i think it was going to be there's superstars i think there's superstars and referees that are, are putting stuff in the book are also going to do the audio versions so we'll see what happens aj um, lee's new book's coming out as well yeah and she did an audio version for that so that's interesting i actually want to maybe get that i get it too you know what i'd like i'd like that uh aj lee's uh i forget what it's called some of like a super woman or something like that but it looks good it's an autobiography about AJ Lee. Um, I want to read up on that. I haven't read Daniel Bryan's book yet. Apparently, that's good too. I, I'm ashamed of myself for not reading that. So I want to read up on that and you know others. I guess Stephanie. You know what? As much as I hate Stephanie McMahon, I'd read her book just to mm. see like what she actually thinks about the company and what her actual thoughts are. And I don't got to hear her cringe voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying that audio version. <laughs> um, other than that, guys. That is going to wrap it up for week number 45 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on the Holds Barb Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and the Tuesday Night Smackdown Live from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our new segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP and on the Spreaker app which you can download for all Apple and Android devices so go check it out guys it's a fantastic app and after it is done it's posted in full on YouTube Spreaker and now back on iTunes so go check us out on iTunes search for Lowdown Show Brand Wars and you'll find us there give us a 5 star rating you know download it you know give us some ratings guys all we want is some feedback 
Other than that, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP and subscribe to us on YouTube and tweet at us to join in on all conversations and have your thoughts and questions read on the podcast. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. We'll be getting a trade video in soon for some WWE cards. Ooh, and, that... and also, happy long weekend, corporate long weekend to everybody celebrating President's yep. Day or Family Day. Yep. And as always, guys, we are here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. What you gonna do?